Today I'm going to be doing a book out that unboxing. Um, I do their Black, not Black Friday, Boxing Day sale every year. Their Boxing Day sale is usually really, really good. Um, it's usually like I buy $100 worth of books, which on Book Outlet is a lot of books because some of them are only $3 and uh, you get $40 off. Their deal wasn't that this year. It was a little, it wasn't quite as good. I still went ahead and did it because I love having too many books to read. I don't know why. My book cart here is full and I have boxes of books that are waiting to come onto the book cart to ascend to this status of being wait waiting to be read. Um, so I didn't really need to buy more books than I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this pretty hefty box here. It's pretty heavy. Um, they'll probably live in here for a while until I can put them on my book cart. But let's see what I got. A lot of the books on my TBR, um, I don't remember why I put them on there. So we'll get on my TBR and I won't, I won't know why they're on there by the time I get to reading them. So let's see what is in here. So, on the top, we have a cup, copy of Aurora Rising. Um, I know exactly why I bought this one. It's because it's by the same people who wrote the Illumini Files, which I don't know if you can see on camera. I'm still new to this. Um, but I am excited to read it. Science fiction isn't really my genre. I'm more of a fantasy person, but I did love Illumini Files, and I think they did such a good job with making almost like a found footage sort of book, the way that they did different methods of telling the story. So I'm really excited to see what they did with um, Aurora Rising. As far as the quality of the book, it is in good condition. It has that little red spot down there. So most book outlet books are books that didn't sell in stores. So they have a mark where they're, they were sent off for being overstocked. So I expect a little mark like this somewhere on the book. Sometimes it's on the cover, which I'm not a huge fan of, but that's fine. I don't mind that at all. So that is book number one. I got The Case for Jamie by Brittany Cavallero. Um, I started this series this year and I loved the way that it depicted Charlotte Holmes um, doing like a Sherlock and Watson retelling with their descendants essentially in a world where Sherlock and Watson were real people. Um, I loved Charlotte. I loved the way that she was written. I loved how she had some of like the worst quirks that Sherlock Holmes had that are often erased in retellings. Um, this, I think, is the third book in the series, so I ended up having to buy the second book from uh, Indigo because Book Outlet didn't have it. So again, excellent quality. It does have a little scratch there. That's to be expected. Ooh, I know what this one is. So The Betrothed by Kira Cass. Um, huge fan of the selection series. It's kind of a guilty pleasure series because I don't think it's that great. Um, especially once it gets to the, uh, the last two books in the series about America's daughter. I'm not a fan of those, but, oh, I love the way that it was like a fantasy version of The Bachelorette or The Bachelor, I guess. Um, I love them, so I was so excited to see her publishing something else. And, um, this one is a nice hardcover. Ooh, the inside is beautiful. I'm really excited to get into this. We love a book with a map. So, again... Other than that, Mark, excellent quality book. I'm excited to have bought that. So this is Fan the Fame. Um, I think it's about sort of a gaming YouTuber. I am a sucker for any book about fandom or conventions or anything like that because conventions are some of my favorite places in the world. So if I can go to those places, especially now with COVID, everything is canceled. I didn't get to go to Fan Expo this year or anything like that. So. I love books that have that setting because it lets me escape to it even when it's not summer and I can't be physically at the convention myself. Um, so that's why I picked up this book. Um, I believe she also wrote Cat and Meg Conquer the World. Something like that. I, I can't remember the exact title. I did enjoy it. It was a nice book where female friendship was the center and it wasn't about romance or anything. It was just about two girls who were best friends figuring that out. Um, so I'm excited to read her next book. And that's probably why I picked that up. Um, I have Queen of Ruin here, which is the sequel to Grace and Fury. Um, Grace and Fury was actually an Owl Crate book in 2019, I believe. Um, so I have the Owl Crate edition of that, but this will match up with it fine. 
Um, I didn't expect to like it, but I did like it enough that I wanted to read the sequel. I wanted to see where they were going with the plot, and there was... The, the, the male characters were kind of interesting. I thought one might be book boyfriend quality, but I wasn't sure, so I have to read the sequel to figure out if he is. Again, absolutely nothing wrong with this book. I think it was like five dollars. Um, I can almost not buy books from <laughs> from Amazon and stuff at, at new price knowing that in a few months they might end up on book outlet for this, this cost. <laughs> We've got... American Royals. So this is actually a series that I heard about. Um, I thought the premise was just really exciting about like an alternate America where instead of having a, a democracy, they decided to just have their own royal family. So sort of Washington's family descended into a royal line. Um, again, really nice quality book. I'm excited to, to read the premise of this. I don't know if I'll end up actually loving it or not, um, but it was it was a more unique premise than I than I thought it was when I first heard about the series, so I'm excited to see if that holds up to what everyone has told me it is like. We have Sherwood by Megan Spooner. Um, this is, again, I love retellings. I love Robin Hood. I've never read a Robin Hood retelling, and I really love that this one is from Maid Marian's sort of point of view, and it's about post-Robin Hood. He's dead, something happened to him, no one cares. Um, Maid Marian is now the protagonist, so I'm excited to see what they do with that. I also really love sort of the the time period and setting that Robin Hood is in, so I'm wondering if that'll be a five-star read for this year, if I get to it this year. <laughs> um, I don't know that I will, but I'm really excited to give it a try. Black Coats is the next book we have here. So the Black Coats, this is by Colleen Oakes, who wrote the, uh, Queen of Hearts saga, so I read all those. I Those were complete cover buys. I picked them up because the cover is so neat. And I really liked how she told the story of Wonderland from the Queen of Hearts perspective. And that in the end, she's not... She's definitely someone who's done bad things, but she, she's still not made out to be the, the huge villain that she is in the initial Alice in Wonderland story. Um, I really liked seeing things from her point of view. So I was excited to read this. I don't know what this is about. I might have at one point. I don't anymore. Um, essentially, I bought this because I liked Colleen Oaks, and I thought, I might as well get another book by her. <laughs> well, I'll just take a quick look here. Looks like it's about a secret society exacting vengeance on men who hurt girls and women, which is something that we are here for. So I'm excited to read that. We've got four more books, it looks like. So A List of Cages was actually recommended to me by someone on my Goodreads. They said I would love this because of some of the other books I read. I like books that deal with hard topics and sort of overcoming them and surviving past certain things. So this was recommended to me by someone. Um, it's actually a really beautiful paperback. Usually paperbacks feel kind of cheap. This one has a beautiful cover. It just looks like a really nice read. So I'm excited to get into that. Um, I love to read books that people recommend to me because then when I like them I already have someone who I can talk to about it and I know that I'm not gonna have to try and convince... I do like to convince other people to read books that I like but I know that I don't have to try and convince someone just so I can talk to someone about it because I already have that pre-built-in person to talk to the book about when I finish it. Um, we've got Fresh Ink. So another thing that I really love is anthologies where multiple authors come in and contribute a story on one subject. This one is about tattoos. So it's, <laughs> I, I don't know much about it, but I do know that there's some art authors in here like Nicola Yoon and Melinda Lowe that I really respect and love their work. So I'm excited to see the short stories that got published in here. Um, yeah, I've been waiting to read this one for a while, but it's not one that I wanted to pay full price for. So I've been waiting for it to show up on Book Outlet or somewhere like that. And the last, okay. So apparently I got two copies of this book. I don't recall putting those in my cart together. Um, things happen. It's probably like $5, so it's not a huge deal. Um, so I did want to pick this up. It wasn't one that I had high on my TBR, so I, I've been waiting for it since it was released, I think, but I wasn't running out to get it. So when I saw it on Book Outlet for $5, I was like, I'll pick it up. And I guess I liked it so much I picked up two copies. So maybe I'll do a giveaway with something, or I'll donate it to my local library, something like that. I'm not going to keep two copies of a book. Um, I do have some books that have multiple copies that I do need to 
purged to a library somewhere. I recently moved and I've realized how many books I have and found books that I didn't realize that I have. So the, one of these will be going in that box and the other one I will keep until I have a chance to read it. So that is everything. I think in total I spent maybe $70 to get a, a, a good like $200 worth of books as far as I'm concerned. Like I could go to any bookstore and each of these would be about $30 separately. So I do love Book Outlet. I wish they'd had their usual sale um, that they have on Boxing Day. Uh, but I will be coming back. I know they usually have a summer sale, so I'll probably do that again, even though these books will probably still be in this box waiting to be read, because I can't control myself. <laughs> Anyways, that's everything for today. Thank you for joining me. Um, let me know about your latest book haul in the comments. Tell me if you have any of these on your TBR, if you've already read any of these, what you thought of them. You know, just let me know. I love to hear from you guys, and I'll see you later.